Okay. First item up for bid is consensus for going to bid. Uh, Banning Engineering, Water Department. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen of the council. Um, so just kind of wanted to give you a brief update, <coughs> very brief. Um, we've been working on uh, the construction plans and design for the uh, proposed new water treatment plant uh, that was adopted as part of the master plan uh, for the town. And first, uh, <clears throat> first piece that we'll have to do for uh, the scheduling of this is to build a new finished water storage tank. They, they call it a clear well when it's actually at the uh, water facility. And so this piece here, this tank, will have to be constructed prior to uh, the new water plant contractor coming on site because they'll use this part for staging and cranes to set every, their panels around and construct this tank. Um, so <coughs> we'd like to go to bid for this so we can uh, start construction on that yet this summer and get that completed by the end of the fall um, while we're still working on uh, design plans and drawings. Uh, for the water plant that we'll be bidding uh, at late fall uh, and then starting construction of this winter, early spring of next year. So uh, this tank right here, it's, uh, we reduced it from 500000 to 400000 It's not going to change the, the operation of the facility uh, significantly. And the reason we did that is we have an existing raw water main. It's not shown on this plan, but it comes through right through here. This is the, the hillside that you see that goes up um, the road up to Aiken Park and Wexford and Stratford's up through this area. So uh, we would have to have relocated a, a finished water main that comes from the old, from the, the new plant, or I'm sorry, the existing plant, and they would have to do a lot of shoring and, and sheeting through here, which this really raised the, the cost of that. And the reason why we were pushing this, this plant and tank this far back uh, to this location is uh, we wanted to utilize this area for the existing football field for two new uh, baseball diamonds and utilize the existing football tower to mm -hmm. announce uh, for both facilities. So this is not part of the project, but this is kind of part of the park's master plan to do that. And I believe that you are in process of moving the football diamonds or football fields up to Aiken Park mm -hmm. and then after once that's completed then they can start work on uh, these new fields as well. We'll have to relocate a little bit of that trail uh, through here once we start uh, construction on this area. We won't affect the football fields with the tank or the, the plant project um, for football this fall um, but you know eventually we'll, we'll encroach on that a little bit but the main thing we're looking for right now is uh, approval to go ahead and move forward with bidding this project. We have um, the construction permit from IDEM uh, to uh, go ahead and construct this. We've uh, got, uh, obtained all the other permits as well as um, uh, got inquiries from uh, potential contractors that, that do this. It's about 53 and a half feet in diameter. It's reduced from 65 from the 500,000. That's why we were able to, you know, minimize. Uh, the interruption on this side saved about five hundred thousand dollars in site construction costs to do that. Um, estimated cost were about a million dollars for that tank, and that's kind of where we landed uh, in the master plan as well. So we're we're still on track for that uh, budget cost. We got back uh, about three weeks ago. So as you know, everything changes you know right now in this this uh, economic climate, but that's. We're still shooting for that million dollar range for the tank. We'll be buried about four feet deep, you know, to the finished water level on the front side, and then the back side will probably be about twice that, about eight feet buried. Um, one tank, the tank that we decided to go with that, that lends itself to that is a, it's a pre stressed spiral or wound tank, which basically it's a steel tank with a concrete outside uh, shell that has pre stressed steel that wraps this whole thing. We actually went and saw one that was being constructed up um, off of 86th Street for Citizens Energy. Um, it's kind of a neat, neat process. But anyway, we're hoping we can go ahead and, and start advertising for that as, as soon as maybe next week. Uh, we hope to maybe bid those uh, if the, if the uh, council chooses on July 7th. 
and then at the next meeting uh, of July the 21st to award that after we've re reviewed the bids and we probably won't have contracts ready at that time but maybe we can get um, approval for the board president to sign those after the town uh, attorneys reviewed those so we can expedite that we're a little bit we kind of pushed this off not knowing what was going on with everything going on out west because uh, there's other projects as far as the bonding and financing that we wanted to include in this um, so that's that's kind of where we're at with that so that's any questions question that mm -hmm. tank how far will it be sticking out so it's 23 and a half feet to the high water level we're buried uh four feet in the front so we're about 19 feet there's probably about two feet of freeboard and then the, it's a, it's you know it's no. domed okay. Um, so we're, you know, you're probably at the end of the day at the top point, you might be about 20, 22, 23 feet in the, the center of that showing the back. We're, we've tried to tuck that in, you know, you the roads here and then the woods is here. So it, it's, we've tried to try to make it not as obscure as possible through that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so. So will that um, that walking path uh, mm -hmm. to the, I guess that would be the, the one that normally comes east. through here? Yeah. I know that walking along that, that that's not real level. It kind of sits at an angle. <clears throat> yeah. So so it's like higher on the wooded side and it's lower on the uh, on the other on the like where the diamond would be. Is there any way for us to maybe correct that, flatten it out with this process? <coughs> yeah. Mm. Well, that's well. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. It just seems like it leans more than three percent, but I don't know what three percent is. I, a, mathematics wise, I do, but angle wise, yeah, I don't. Like that. There's a. What separates the uh, new water plant and the ball field? Um, that that's up to your guys' wishes on here. I, I would assume tree. we'd have a, like a a black vinyl coat, coated fence. Of I'm sure, some there'll sort. be a fence fencing fence, around and then there'll the be okay. you know we could put you know trees and shrubbery along that edge. I don't want any kids chasing a ball into the uh, water tank. So water tank. our plan is to put in real fields, not okay. Sand Okay, so they'll be fencing around the yeah, outfield? around the field. Be literally okay. As well, so it's gonna be Even so, outside of the field itself, there would have to be some type of barrier to prevent people from going in there. Yeah, mm -hmm. we have a... Uh, we're losing a lot of memorials. Okay. Pretty large canvas for Sure. <laughs> we are we relocating the uh, rotary gazebo, or is that? So, yes. To answer your question, if we can, yeah, once we start we'll taking it apart, uh, I got gotcha. you. Yeah. You know that what you're talking about is the the structure that's right here that yeah. you can sit in the benches. Our intent, talking with Will, is to relocate that and put it right here, actually over the trail, so people could be walking through and uh -huh. they could sit on either side, and you know, as we walk through this this section through here. It's going to be challenging during construction because we really need to be able to fence this section off. And, the, you know, this is going to, we've talked about maybe just stoning this piece while we're building this. And then when this, uh, when the plant uh, contractor comes in, you know, this will be paved and this will be in construction as well. But this piece right here is going to be challenging. Uh, and I don't know if we've came up with a real good solution there. Biggest problem with anything is unless you like, hey, what's going on over here? Just walk right in there. The goal is to pre stone it <clears throat> once he decides on another plan. Dig it out, like it's ready to go for a trail, put in the stone, compact it. That will be the temporary route around. And then we're going to come back after they're 
done in an hour. So we'll have construction fencing that goes along this edge. This is this piece is all new through here. That'll be stone, and then we'll have construction fencing through here. But we'll still have an access drive that we'll need through here to get to the tank. So right through here is kind of like, you know, the the danger zone that's going to have to be. It's gonna be messy. You know, enter at your own risk. I mean, it's just the na unfortunate nature of it through there. Um, Bill, are you going to keep the other one? Uh, my goal is to actually do that, and I really want to start separating and having areas for things. You know, seven things. That opens up that space for the parking. Church, yeah. So kind of enhancing that area. We'll probably end up moving the lights because the lights are oh. they're really nice lights. So we'll have to find out where we want to do this. We want to do this same layout. <laughs> we want to do the same layout over in Ellis Park as well, you know, someday mm -hmm. when we have money. Just because right now what we have, we have fields hitting towards each other. Now the growth is you sit in the outfield, not up by, you know, Balls straight at people <laughs> with no fencing. But we're really just trying to grow and professionalize it. Good. What about the Little League diamond that's there now? Barnett would oh. not change. Okay. Sam Thompson Two and Field one. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. they're okay. kind of hitting at each other and it causes some limits. Yes. Plus, uh, we actually put parking around. Uh -huh. We all know that's. <laughs> Right. <laughs> Big thing in Ellis mm -hmm. Park. Okay. Yeah. Any other questions? Oh, Mark. It is consensus from the council sure. whenever you're ready. Yeah. This is a sidebar. I, I intend on one of these future council meetings we'll have a little more time. I'd like to get into kind of where we're at with the plant, where we're at with the wells, kind of give you an update of where we're at with all of that as well. But Sounds good. I know you have a lot tonight, so I won't, won't bother you with that. Thank you. Anyone? Consensus? Yep. I'm All right. Good. We have I'm consensus. Good. All right. Thank, thank you. you. We'll, we'll go to work. All right. Thank you. Okay. Along these lines, um, Wednesday we're going to be presenting the bond for the um, expansion on the water treatment plant. Would you guys like O.W. Crone to be here to present that? No. Yes. Buzzer, one of his staff members. I haven't seen it. Okay. Talking about the next meeting? What's that? The, the July 16th? No, the next Wednesday. June 16th. June 16th, June 16th. I mean. Uh, you've got uh, items through H if Tom approves them. You'll have um, request for street closure, the waterworks bond, vehicle bond, or out ordinance. Um, annexation ordinances that are up for public comment or public that was less yeah, no they, they're up again oh okay yeah um, <coughs> this time they'll have to have a public hearing they'll gotcha. be gaveled open and closed uh, two resolutions uh, one for the public meetings uh, one to opt out of a, an opi opioid uh, litigation and capital expenditure request from waste I put, Matt, I, do you feel comfortable? I, I feel comfortable. Just wanted to you know, <coughs> check with you guys. Okay. I'm okay with If you would like them okay. here. Or, it'll just be introduction Wednesday night, and then the first meeting in July yeah. will be. Okay. So I guess if you have questions after the introduction, okay. then yeah. and work through those. Yep. Kent's offered like up his services as well, if you'd like. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay, item B, the star of the night, budget 101, <laughs> the budget workshop, Jenny. Okay. Well, I just wanted to get with you guys this evening to kind of, if you'll take one and pass it down, I'll pass these out too. Let me go through this. 
Read it. Read it. Oh, it, it looks pretty. Sure. <laughs> yeah, this is my specialty. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we got more. We have another one. Hi. Can I get can I get CPE credit for that? Uh, we should. I think you should. I should be Okay, I thought it would be helpful just because last year we were surf. thrown into everything yeah. with COVID. We didn't have the time to sit down beforehand and just kind of go through things. So this evening, I mean, I don't want to take up much of your guys' time. I just wanted to provide you with these two binders. I hear something I ringing. Oh, it's your... Sorry, no problem. Sorry, I, sorry. I didn't know where it's coming from. And yeah. I, okay. Out for you. This is what was presented by Baker and Tilly at the um, 2021 budget um, workshops, which were, of course, all done electronically. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> and they're just, um, it explains the budgeting process. I'll just go through this real quickly. We won't go page by page. But it provides um, an overview of the budgeting process along with a timeline and what I'll do is just let you guys go through this in your own time you can call me you know if you want to sit down with me individually we can schedule a time you know I'm helping in. and we can just sit down after you guys review this and go through it go ahead well I was just going to say um, I, I can't remember I think it was before I took office uh -huh. we were going through budget stuff and I remember texting, emailing you. So I'm telling this to my fellow council members. I had like weirdly specific questions at the time, and Jenny within you know a day would get me all the information I needed, and it helped me kind of on the front end by getting that information. So that, that's what this all reminds me of because I remember those weird questions that I had. Yeah. Because corporate budget, <coughs> municipal budget, nothing. So just as a resource that you guys just know, it, was, it helped me a lot. Yeah. <clears throat> and I know, you know, you guys have one budget under your belt, so I thought you have a better understanding to be able to look at this stuff too this, this year. Yeah, hopefully we can have a, a better process. Just we don't have COVID to worry about. Hopefully. Right. <laughs> When it, a little less pressure. Yeah. You may have just mentioned this, so if you did, I'm sorry. When is our first, next real budget meeting? Well, that's what also I wanted to do tonight. I have a budget calendar for each one of you. Okay. I can wait. I just wanted to. No, no, no. That's great. Just jump in at any point. And these are just preliminary dates that we have plugged in. And I wanted to check, of course, with you guys tonight to make sure that they would work. But... As I've always said, we really can't start doing anything until we close the books for the end of June. So we have the first six months. We don't receive our maximum levy growth factor um, until around the very end of June, which is about the same time, you know, we'll be closing the books. So really the first week in, in July. We're anticipating that to be about three and a half percent is anticipation, but we won't have factual numbers until then. So I just wanted to go through this timeline, and you guys can interrupt me at any point. Um, we'll pre um, prepare the revenue estimates for all of the funds um, the end of July, and we'll um, get the proposed budgets from the department heads the end of July as well. The Department of Local Government Finance provides estimates um, anywhere from July 19th to August 26th is when we receive the information on circuit breaker as well and the revenue and budget estimates from PLGM. So um, I'm going to try very hard to schedule as soon as possible with our DLGF rep so that we can be on the front end of that hopefully, but scheduling goes. We will complete the first draft of the budget for tax funds um, August 6th. And then our first draft, this is 
the town manager and I work on, on all of this stuff, you know, ahead of time. Um, August the 11th. And then I would like to have the department head meeting August 16th. That's a Monday, and we usually meet anyway on Mondays. So Mark, if you can propose that to the department heads. <coughs> I have it highlighted. You know, these dates may change, and I'll keep you guys in the loop and send out timelines. If anything does change, I'll email them to you guys. We will, uh, the, Mark will submit the council workshop advertisement for um, the Republican, August 16th, and then we will review the budget and prepare packets for you guys um, August 16th to the 19th. And I would like to have the council budget worksheet uh, workshop, I'm sorry, August 23rd, if that would work for all of you guys. That's the off Wednesday that we don't have a council meeting in August. 23rd or 24th? <coughs> 25th, I'm sorry. I was looking at when I would distribute the packets when I said the 23rd. The 25th. <coughs> I thought you guys had shared with me at one of the recent council meetings that you'd rather meet in the evening than on a Saturday with it being summer and we were all so busy when we started looking at our August calendar. I won't be home any Saturdays. What'd you say? I said I won't be home any Saturdays. <laughs> okay. Well, school's in I think in we by all ran into that with sports and everything. Yeah, school's in session by then, so. So does that August 25th that look like a me. good day? Okay. Are we... We had prepared for a July 19th. <coughs> I've got it on my calendar, a July 19th meeting. Are we canceling that then? We're canceling that. That wasn't going to work for a majority of the department heads. They got back with me and it wasn't going to work. We're not, which, move that to August. Okay. I'll let Lisa know because we were both planning on cooking lasagna for that okay. meeting. We can still Come stop in. by. <laughs> I thought that was for tonight. Oh, you, <laughs> you, can, you can cook lasagna on the 25th. How about yes. that? Yes, ma'am. You'd like to do, if you and Lisa would like to do that? You can do it both nights. And then the rest of these dates are just publication dates and also um, when I'll be submitting the four and three into Gateway. So these are dates for myself. But the pre-adoption public hearing would be the October 6th council meeting. And then the adoption <coughs> of the 2022 budget would be October 20th. Um, again, this might be obvious from this, but forgive me. It, when, when will a council see like draft figures for... That way we're not coming to our first meeting without being able to review everything. Sure. So when we, I needed to, to schedule the department head budget workshop um, with Mark and the department okay. head. If, or we could just <coughs> do all that on that. If there is some um, input or direction that the council would like to see this process go into where where would it be appropriate for each of us or as a whole or as a group or individually to be able to you know um, either facilitate that discussion or to to express those those thoughts during this process well I kind of wanted to get that done tonight as well I have another sheet for you guys okay. um, just my preliminary <laughs> thoughts and um, so any time starting tonight until we, you know, go through this process, I mean, any ideas you guys have, you know, tonight you, you can bring forth and we can start that as, you know, and get the information as soon as we can work through the reports, you know, depending what it is, of course. And then, um, and, and I didn't add, and with Taft Law's here too, if you guys have any questions, she's here, Rep. Jewel and Caitlin couldn't be here tonight, so she's okay. here. On their behalf so she's she could jump in too and if you want to jump in at any point and add anything or 
going to say, could we use, because, I mean, every before every council meeting we're having a work study, right? Couldn't we just use maybe a few minutes for Q&A? That's a good, that's a really good that's idea. A, that's an excellent idea. So Seriously. for the first few weeks and then yeah. that would kind of make us, you know, think about the process a little bit more. Yeah. Instead of sitting aside, well, I want to get together this day, but you might not have all your questions that day, but right. if you just do a little, maybe the first... 10 minutes of the, the work studies are pretty open yeah uh, we do an agenda just right. again as a formality uh, but as a matter of fact next week's uh, agenda for the work study basically says any any topics that the council wants to discuss. okay i, I was going to say or or we could just leave an an open old business <laughs> budget <Right. laughs> yeah, on ongoing on until until we yeah until, until we uh you know feel that we're that would that would like, work best idea. for me. I like it. I like it. Then that would give you time in between meetings to yeah. Yeah. process. I like it. Yeah. And like I said, as you guys have questions, don't hesitate, you know, to reach out to me. Let's see, but we can go down. Um, <clears throat> real fast too and, and you can add Greg I know you have a couple of things you and I have talked about I I tried to add those those on here and David and, and those were the guys. items that I was okay thinking good. about making sure that yeah we so um, again I said on the timeline that um, we're expecting the levy growth factor to be around three and a half percent and we should know in early July for sure on that And then, um, and, and we don't think that that's in any jeopardy with COVID last year and stuff like that. No, no. as far yeah. as um, DLGF, this this is their timeline that they provided for. Talking about the three. Oh no, no, I don't think. Do you as Anne have anything? If you'd what? step up to the microphone, please. Sorry, <laughs> you. you <laughs> You were quite a ways away. That's, that's I have a really big mouth. So yeah, that's, right. that's right. Well, yeah. use, use it into the microphone. The, so. I think it's really good that you're starting the budget conversations right now. I'm a former city controller. I was as anal as could be about the budget with department heads and working with the mayor. So I think it's really good that you're doing this. Um, and I think it's really important that you have uh, your input on what your goals and priorities are as well. And the sooner the better, because you can't get to August at, when they've already calculated maximum level calculations possible projected insurance um, increase, which will likely be very little with the A Medical Trust, but you have two health plans here, which one participant's on the HSA plan. I'm not sure why you would want to keep that and just kind of, excuse me, the PPO plan. Everyone is on the HSA plan. Um, some little things like that that will be your final decision, that it's time to look at some numbers now so you can incorporate it into the budget, along with potential salary increases. Keeping in mind that 4% last year got you about only $118,000 of new levy money. So you're never looking at getting a lot of new dollars if you're looking at creating new positions, if you will. You need to look at possibly um, your, your salary allocations across the funds. What do the utilities contribute? What does the general fund contribute? I know you had um, a police officer in edit that you may want to bring back to the general fund. So these are all the things that you need to look at right now before you really dig into balancing um, and getting the expenditures from the department heads and doing these revenue calculations by fund because you have to have every fund has to be balanced individually and then also as a whole with all your maximum levy limitations across it um, so you're not going to be looking at a lot of new dollars the good thing here is for in one year the recovery act funds that you're going to get so how do we use those with the projects that folks are coming up with again to then build next year's budget, knowing that that's kind of a one-time distribution over the next couple of years that you're going to be able to use. So it's really important that you know what you can spend those funds on and what you can't spend those funds on. So then you can allocate some dollars elsewhere. Like right now, you can't spend it on roads and streets. So maybe you want to spend it on some other projects and funnel more tax levy dollars to some roads and street projects for the next two years. So these are the discussions to have now so you can put it into play instead of August, if that makes any sense. Because um, you don't get a lot of new revenue with your, with your, with your levy increase. 
Um, and then with some of the the new homes, the new and development, sorry, factoring I'm, that in. And on the on the Recovery Act money, is there a timeline on on when that has to be spent by? Or it's, or, it's over or the can, next it's over the next two years, I believe. And actually, there's a there's a presentation that I can email Jenny that AIM did. Um, that really the National League of Cities did that really lays out a lot of information. And I think you would find it really helpful to run through those slides. That, so that I'll email that to you. Yeah, that would be great. Um, and then, and then there's, there's still rolling out rules. We don't have all the answers to that yet. It's kind of still changing from the U.S. Treasury Department. Um, but you, we do have a good idea what you can spend it on. If you're doing some broadband development or some utility expansions and so forth and so on, not roads and streets, not salary increases. So you got to keep that in mind. Just because you have an extra million and a half, two million coming in, you can't give those salary increases because you're never going to be able to fund it two years going forward. So just a couple of my two cents on things you need to think about, things that Jenny really needs to know to really be able to give you um, a total picture and some input and calculations now regarding how changing the health plan would impact or, again, the, the salary allocations and all of that stuff. So just a few things to think about. You're welcome. Some of the things that I've highlighted here, um, a couple of you had reached out to me about possibly um, increasing the pilot from our utilities. Oh, I have that, that listed. I, I'm not recommending that at the, this point, but we will definitely look at it. And do an analysis on that. That's payment in lieu of taxes. Um, we are going to have the center and Marion Township contracts done in August this year so that that's part of the budgeting process. Of course, we expect building permits to <laughs> increase and that all goes into the general fund. Looking at past history, our pool and concessions have decreased, of course, last year with COVID. Um, so we're looking at that. And then, Greg, you and I have talked a lot about the interest rates are just still low and the borrowers as well, and especially for the TIF district and the redevelopment commission. I just wanted to highlight that. And, and that's as far as revenues. Um, we're just looking at ways that we can increase our overall general um, expenditures, we had talked, the department heads and myself in a meeting about possibly going to fuel cards, um, Superintendent Pitcher's kind of heading up the research on that. I don't know if we're still doing that, but that was more of when we were looking at if we were going to do something with the county. <laughs> yeah, so I have that as a, a discussion point. We need to increase the boards. Uh, boards are meeting more often, um, so as far as their salaries, they get paid per meeting. So we need to increase the overall salaries for boards, because I, I fully expect that to be the same for next year. See that anything slowing down? Health insurance premiums. And, and Greg, if you want to, you and I have talked a lot about that. <coughs> I just kind of wanted to get an idea this evening from you guys on how you want us to do an analysis on that. What you're thinking. We, we've gone in several directions, you and I, talking about that. Um, as far as the percentages that employees contribute, you know, we, we of course have our employee-only plan. We have employee and children, employee and spouse, and then family. So we offer this. And... Um, if we want to change that and if we want to allocate more for the employees to pay, these are all, all things that we several weeks. Um, as Ann mentioned, we only have one employee that's on the PPO plan. I recommend that we no longer offer the PPO plan for 2022 and only offer the health savings. And then um, the <coughs> clinic. We, briefly touched on this last year, but we pay $50,000 annually for the clinics to the employees. I think it is um, a benefit, but with so much that we have offered through United Healthcare and uh, 
they've evolved a lot with medications and different things that they offer, uh, zero copays or, or low copays, and the network that they provide in physicians. Definitely discuss that. Salaries. So as far as what you guys would like us to forecast out, 1%, 2%. <coughs> And we, we have met and talked a lot about the, the public safety departments, police and fire, um, adding positions to them. And, you know, the million dollar question always is, where are we going to get the money, you know, to do things like this and to think outside of the box. But even with the ARP, um, the American Recovery Plan money, you can't use that on salary and wages in a, in a lot, you know, the COVID, of course. But I know that it's definitely something we need to we need to look at. So, any ideas that you guys have or suggestions as far as on the safety? Yes. That you're about? I, I do have one. Maybe through this process, if we could, and maybe we've already done this. You guys have a quick answer. How many police officers, for example, should we have on duty over the weekend or at any point in a town our size? Um, and I'll just tell you the reason I asked that is because I, I inquired with Hilton about something a few weeks ago, and I was told that we only have two officers on duty on the weekend. And I thought when we have huge events like we did with uh, Levi Riggs and other, you know, other events, that that seemed kind of low, but I could be wrong on that. So as we're talking about being able to afford more officers, if we're going to do that, I want to make sure we've got the right coverage at the right times because it as as we grow it's going to you know we're going to have more public safety concerns of course um so that was just a what's that right so i just want and i just a, i thought that i had you know that was shocked at how few officers we have on duty on the weekends so and we had talked about with, of course, the growth that we're going to experience the next several years. Um, this has been discussed several times about going to a director of utilities where that person would oversee public works, water, wastewater, and stormwater. So we can, you know, we could definitely look at adding that to the budget. If that's something that you guys are, we had looked at director positions all around. I, I don't think that it's something that we need for public safety in the other administrative areas of the town. But with meeting with Will and Mark, they felt like, and Mark, you can jump in here, that it may be beneficial to have a director of utilities so there's one person that's spearheading the expansions on the okay. infrastructure. That doesn't necessarily replace any position. It just kind of consolidates some of the administrative side of it. Okay. So it was a carryover from the previous administration. Mm -hmm. Especially with all the development we have going mm -hmm. on. And, sure. uh, having one person that contractors can go to say, okay, what, what is this fee? What is this fee? Of course, as you guys probably personally are seeing, we're going to have to increase gasoline and our maintenance line, and as well as professional services for attorney and financial advisors. Again, with just the growth and development that we have going on, we're utilizing their services a lot more. Actually, on that one, real quick, um, I believe that we pay for a lot of professional fees out of different buckets. Yes. yes. Is it possible for us to have a line item that is only professional services? Well, we do have just a line item that's professional services out of the general fund, out of the edit fund, and out of the host fund. Is there any way for that to be consolidated into its own fund instead of in, instead of being from those other, I'm going to call them departments or whatever? Well, it's 
The problem, of course, is what we've run into with everything is that the one fund alone can't sustain, you know, what we're paying in professional services. That's how we offset it. With. Sorry, it has to be across those other those exactly. other entities. Exactly. No to be able to afford, you know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what yeah. we're saying, and we for the non-departmental, it's non-departmental professional services, and that's our financial advisor. Um, and attorney fees, some attorney fees come out of that, depending on what the item is that we're being charged for. And it, of course, is anything the economic development with professional services. So a lot of that's engineering fees. Do you recall how much money um, was dedicated to the police merit board, just out of curiosity, last year? Oh, for the board? And you're, you're asking to pay the board members. Is that what you're asking? No, uh, the police professional fees that were incurred from the police merit board. We did not add that as a, its own line item. We're doing that in 2022. So those have been coming out of the non departmental. Okay, so do, do we know what we just out of curiosity? Do, you, do we know how much we spent this year? Yeah. I can get that number for you. I don't have that with okay. me. I'd like 2020 and 2020 just, and year to date on 2021, please. I know it's a lot less this year, of course, than it was in. Okay, and then of course it's offset at both the host fund as well, and that's where a majority of the attorney fees come out of. We will have elections next year, uh, Chris Gerald's position and Tom Pato's position. Since we share that with the county, um, I reached out to Nancy Marsh and Laura, and they're anticipating it'll be less than $5,000. It was so high it, because in the previous year because it was only our election. And I know we're working to get. Well, we had the uh, referendum, which is a big part of the. Um, we're still supplementing the geo bond and the park bonds with the host fund. Um, I would like to still do that in 2022. And the rainy day fund, it's been changed that we can transfer up to 15% into the rainy day fund what so was it what was it previously it. what'd you say ann i'm sorry um can i have a question just out of place here probably but over the last few months we had talked about with regard to the host fund um approaching the budget this year as if that didn't exist just to see what our shortfalls is that being taken into consideration yes. as we move forward okay yes and we are actually going to do the host budget with this budget so we're going to do everything together this year and um i put on here that we would like to reduce the reliance on the host you did and um <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. it's normally okay. i'm the one that can make, i can make no, no I, i'm the one that can make fun of not being able to see anything so <laughs> So we're going to do the host, and that's something that I'd like to get from you guys of how much you would like to reduce the host fund and, and what you would like to look at the other funds. I'd like to start at zero. <laughs> Go from there. Well, that's not going to work. Right. Zero reliance. We've done really well this year. I mean, considering all, we'll have bank reconciliations I should, done tomorrow or Friday. So this weekend, I'll be able to send you guys the end of May's. We've done really well. So 
what questions do you guys have for me or what do you want to add or Ann, if you want to jump in do you have anything you want to add or say or what what am I forgetting It's 2.1 million. I'm wondering if we do <coughs> the work studies, maybe we should just take a couple of the hot funds such as host and edit and maybe work through a fund at each work study. Well, you know, like have one dedicated towards the host fund, one work study, one for the edit, you know, like MVHLRS, we could, of course can combine those. If there's something like, I like that idea, but it's not set in stone that the, the work says are at 6.30. I mean, if there's something that we needed an hour, we could change it to 6. Just as a 48 hours. I mean, I'm, I I'm fine with that. You know, we got a lot to chew on mm -hmm. and good discussion, but there's something that we need. Really. That's a good idea. If we're staying on it each time, right. I think we're going to be in way better shape than Yeah, because like Ian said, we're going to have to <coughs> drill down and get actual figures right. of, you know, what you guys are forecasting and planning so that we're working with real numbers. I, it's very important that we communicate our expectations. Depending. They may not be. The, uh, I think the detail that we're going to be going into, you know, and I know last year was COVID, you know, related, but I think it was kind of what we, you know, maybe had expected, you know, last year that, you know, then we got under the gun at the last minute, so. I you guys would want me to go through that page by page. No, but I do, but to, on that, <clears throat> obviously the objective to this meeting is to give us as much information on how this process works. If you could, is it just as simple as reading through this? Is that your recommendation? Is that we read through these? How can we best learn what you're trying to teach us? Yes, I would say read through both of these and then just call me with any questions. Don't, okay. don't hesitate to reach out. And like I said, I can schedule <coughs> meetings with you guys. I mean, two of us. Whoever works best for your budget, we can make it work. And I like lunch, so if you want to put yeah, it I love lunch. I love to eat. Absolutely. I think this is good stuff. I mean, that's. I just wanted to keep it simple tonight. I mean, I probably Anne would went into a lot more detail. I frustrate the heck out of her because. <laughs> But I, I um, just wanted to sit down tonight, you know, answer any questions you guys have, kind of get an idea of what you guys are thinking, just mainly get ahead of it, provide this information that, that we've received from the budget workshop, get that to you. AIM always has good information. <coughs> yes. They make it easy to understand. Yeah, and it's my understanding we're going to be meeting in person and having a conference, right, Mark, in the fall, okay. Will? 
Yes. Great. Yeah. Because yeah. Is everyone on the Yes. Yeah. yeah. So and and again, I'm going to ask the question. I'm going to ask it just kind of in general for everybody and whoever would like to answer, chime in. Can you give us a quick refresher on the? Um, I'll just say like like the levy and and circuit breaker. So I, I, it appears that you have you have a certain amount coming in, but then the circuit breaker takes away. So then why why are I guess why does the state even provide us with a total number if that's not what we're getting? I mean I just I mean you know why why confuse it anymore? I mean what's the number we're getting? I can answer that. Yes yes oh. well, I was kind of looking at you it's, anyway. So it's, so you have your we're looking at your maximum levy limitation right and that that is um, you're using your total assessed value and your tax rate of which. For the budget preparation, we reduce by 15%. We have to, because when you advertise, you have to make sure you're capturing your, your maximum. Or they're going to deny your budget. So we play what's called the budget game. But so you have your maximum levy growth. They're going to allow you to grow your levy, let's just say 4%. But all the tax rates combined, it's not just Danville, right? It's everyone in the county that's going to force you to hit that circuit breaker or that property tax cap. And then the allocation comes back to every taxing unit for that reduction. So as a homeowner, you're never going to pay more than 1% of your net, net assessed value on your home, right? So if you're if you're 1% is $1,000, but the tax assessment is $500, $1,500, you're going to have a $500 credit. That $500 credit gets allocated to every taxing unit depending on what their tax rate is. Um, so they're showing it in two pieces. So instead of saying, okay, we're just going to let you have a, a maximum levy growth of 3.8% instead of 4, you can't do that statewide, right? Because most some counties have all hit the gaps. There's a few that haven't. So it has to be done in kind of two separate pieces. We're going to give you a maximum levy growth quotient of X, but then we have to factor in where your county rates have hit and where your levy, uh, where your tax caps have hit. So, to back so, it that's off. Why, so that's why I see that tax cap in each individual fund. That's a, your tax funds. That's why you see it in your park fund, your MVH fund, and your general fund. That's and then, why you don't see it in CCD or your continuing education or your special revenue funds. Okay, and here's where me being in the public sector kind of screws everything up for me, is that you say a credit, but that's actually a debit. It's a, it's a re, you're, you're right. It's a reduction. Okay. It's a reduction to your total levy. So so there's no when when that happens, right? And, there, and again, this credit or what mm -hmm. you use it as a credit out there that cannot be that is gone forever. It can't be used to offset anything else. You're exactly right. It's it's actually uh, levy dollars that you're incorporating into your maximum levy growth that you're never going to receive from the county because you've hit your caps uh -huh. and they've had to reduce that expected levy growth by the property tax cap impact. So things that the school does, things that the library does right. have, have a negative impact on us. It can. <laughs> it truly can. And, and you thing, can have the, the same that, impact on other taxing okay, units depending on say, where your levy, where, where your There's things that we could do is. that could impact yeah. them as well. Absolutely, because it's all... A big pie, right? And we've got the Danville chunk and the school corporation chunk and some townships and county and That's other right. special taxing units. And all of that goes into hitting the circuit breaker caps. So you're because correct. When we bond, for example, and if the library bonds and the school <laughs> bonds and that all affects. Thank you. So the schools could have a, a referendum, right? They could have an extra project. Sometimes it goes outside of the caps that folks have to vote for, for an example. So that wouldn't that wouldn't impact you. But if everyone's going up to their maximum levy limitations and you're already at them, you're guaranteed to have that reduction and never going to receive the full maybe one hundred thirty or one hundred forty thousand dollars that your levy growth would allow without the caps. Did that make sense? Mm -hmm. oh. Thank you. Honestly, I hate the property tax caps. I have since they've been, <laughs> they've been in place. How many times did I hit the microphone? Three, three, three. I got super, I get super excited. Super excited. 
Anything else? Right, nothing else. Thank you. All right. Well, entertain a motion to adjourn. I, I have got an oh, okay. first. Uh, I'm going to have surgery <coughs> on my wrist next Wednesday, and I've been thinking all along I'd be here. But I'm, I'm starting to fade real bad, and I just don't know if I'm going to be here. If I'm gonna be here. So if I can't be here, and I don't even think I'll be able to Zoom if I'm not feeling up to it. So <clears throat> I'll just be gone, and you guys will, okay, just warning you. <laughs> <laughs> you can hold the meeting at your house. Well, we could do that. <laughs> um, <clears throat> Hopefully that goes well for you. Yeah, I have to have this right, right one done next Wednesday, and then two weeks after I get the left one done. Is it carpal tunnel? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's your council all job. That, all that works. Jobs. All that works overrated. It's overrated. It is. That note. All right. I move that we adjourn. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion. Meetings adjourned. <laughs>